Hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today in the shop, I'm going to be making a gunstock war club. Now, this is a weapon that was used by Native Americans all across the U.S., and it was reminiscent of a actual gunstock. So we have a really cool wood piece, and they put in a spike on the back. So this is going to be a big metal spike. So I'll forge that. Uh, I will be using this really nice piece of curly white oak for the main body, and I'll do some carvings and some decoration on that, as well as have a leather strap with really cool beaded work on it. Um, this is my submission for the YouTube Knife Maker Chopper Challenge this year. And there's a bunch of awesome participants in this challenge, so we'll talk about them later in the video. But for now, let's start with our design. Now, the really nice thing about this design and Gunstock War Clubs in general is that there's just so many variations and versions of what this can be. It's just a club, it has you know an angle in it, and it's got a spike. Some of them, some don't, but there's so many variations, so I just kind of went through and found ones that I was the most inspired by. I like the angles, I like the proportions, and once I found that, I used that image as a reference to then find out some of the integral things, like the proportions between the end of the buttstock and the main barrel portion, as well as the angles that go between those two. So once I had that, I kind of worked up my first initial drawing with some measurements that looked about right. And then I did my second drawing, which I kind of made it a little bit smaller in some of those proportions. Um, and then between the two, I really liked the first one. So with this one, it has a 10 inch stock with a 20 inch barrel length. Um, it has a 20 degree bend and a 35 degree bend. And then, you know, the bottom of it is seven and a half and 17. And I found all those measurements basically by measuring and finding out proportions from one of the images that I liked. Nice and oversized so I can cut down to my shape. You can always take wood off, you can't put it back on. And my next thing I'm gonna work on now on the Gunstock War Club is the spike on the back. And that spike, I want about maybe five inches or so from the tip to where it reaches the gunstock. And then inside the gunstock, we have about three inches to put a tang. So I'm gonna cut this off. I have about seven inches between these two holes. And this is a piece of just spring steel from a leaf spring, which actually is really good because it's tough and resilient. I don't have to worry about this being a super sharp blade because it's just a chopper blade. It's just a penetrating blade, more of a spear point. So I'll be able to forge this out, draw out the bevels, have about a five inch point. So I'm gonna cut this off flat and I'll draw out the point on one end and then I'll draw it down and work the tang on the other end.
All right, so I'm pretty happy with this now. I have uh, a nice point down the middle. I got rid of all the fish lips and I was able to kind of come back in and add some nice hammer texture to the surface on both sides, kind of clean it up. It's pretty even uh, size all the way down. Now I'm not really worried about having a perfect flat surface because I'm gonna be grinding in bevels and I want that hammered texture to show at the top of the bevel to show the kind of the rough texture against that nice smooth grind of the edges. And again, it's not gonna be super sharp. This is a chopping or a punching blade, so it doesn't need to be uh, like razor sharp. Next thing I want to work on is I have my five inches that goes to about here. So that's the full length of my blade that I want on the outside of the war club. So then I'll have to work down my tang on both sides. So I'll be able to use, I'll use my uh, cutoff tool, kind of punch it on both sides and then work that tang out. Well, it took a few tries, but we finally got there. The first one that we were working on, uh, this one I ended up quenching at some point to cut off some stuff, and I got a crack forming in it, so I had to start over. Um, I started with another piece. This one was working okay, but there was some words, some markings on here um, that I ended up cutting off, and then what, just what I was left over with wasn't enough to be able to form the shape that I wanted. So the last one, uh, this one worked out really well. I was able to forge a really nice point, get the forged texture on it that I wanted, and I have enough material left over that now I'll be able to cut down and shape a tang that can fit inside of the war club. Half inch bevels all the way around, and I'm gonna do half inch tang. I'm gonna start it, oh yeah, half inch is fine, at the transition between blade and tang. It'll probably taper to just under a half inch. This is looking really nice. Um, I'll do a little bit more work as we go to kind of work on the transitions between the tang and the blade as I fit it into the wood of the, the war club. But for now, I'm gonna start grinding my bevels and I'm gonna grind about a half inch bevel all the way around. That'll leave me with a pretty steep edge, but for something that's like a punching, stabbing, chopping weapon, it's better to have that kind of broad edge rather than a really fine edge that could curl. Also, that half inch is about where I have the most hammered texture, and I want to kind of have that nice kind of hammered, wavy uh, top of my bevel line.
happy with the way my spike is turning out but now I need to attach it to the war club and I want to do that while this is still nice and squared off before I started shaping this that way it makes it easier for me to either clamp it into my vise or clamp it into my drill press started. I think that's enough to be able to burn in from there. started. <laughs> Keep going. <sighs> yeah, bottom them out pretty pretty quickly, so The top edge of, or the bottom edge of the spike actually burnt into here, so it's actually sitting down inside here, so you can't see any gaps around it. It's really nice. And unfortunately, it is a little wide, and that's just from like trying to burn that in. Um, so I'll have to fill that in with some epoxy. Um, probably I'll add some black pigment to it, so it makes it nice and dark, and that'll fill in really nicely. That's gonna be good. And when I looked up, when I was looking for inspiration for this Gunstock War Club, I found a few images that I liked. And the one thing I really was wanted to make sure I got right was the proportions and then also the type of grind lines, the different shape at the end. And so I kind of looked at a few different ones and there were some flat ones and some one with some, uh, some angles. Obviously the ones with more angles kind of fit my aesthetic. So I'm just gonna draw out some lines, I'll start grinding and we'll start shaping it down to its final shape. One thing I almost forgot is I want to be able to drill out the pinholes for the tang of this before I grind this because I want this nice flat surface. And I'm actually going to put this in here and I'll drill down in and I'll mark my two spots by just touching the tang and I'll pull it out and finish those holes and then I'll be able to drill these holes separately.
And I'm really pleased with the way this symmetry of all these grinds and all these curves and all these flats have turned out. And I've gotten really nice curves here and really good symmetry. But the thing that's really popped out, which I'm super excited about, is the grain of this ridiculous curly white oak. As I've kind of went in and put the bevels, all this really beautiful grain has popped out. And as I've sanded it, it's just looked even better. So really loving that. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to carve a pattern on both sides of the handle underneath. I'm going to do it symmetrically. This is a pattern that I've kind of come up with over the years. I think that'll look really cool there. Might switch to a smaller ball eventually, but that's a good drawing point. I want to darken my pattern some, so it's not just the, uh, the the grooves that I cut in with the burr. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some charcoal, and I'll kind of push it down into those grooves, and then wipe and sand off the top, and it'll be nice dark lines inside. I'm going to do some finished sanding on it now after I've done the carving. Um, I finished it on the grinder up to 220. I'm going to go now with 220 by hand and finish it with about 500, which is going to make all the grain pop as well as that pattern I just carved in. And this wood finished up to 500 grit. It is just super, super nice, super smooth. And it's gonna make all the grain pop. It's, it's deceiving right now because all the fine powder is all in all the scratches and so you can't really see the contrast. But as soon as I oil this and do the finish on it, it's gonna be crazy. I'm gonna decorate this with some brass tacks. These are quarter inch heads. I'm gonna do a star pattern on one side and then I'll flip it over and do like a circle pattern, which is kind of like a sun or a moon pattern.
gap underneath. That's not great, but I've seen worse. No gaps that I can see through. And the epoxy filled on both sides is nice and even. The blade is straight up and down. The pins are nice and even through and cleaned up. We're going to let this dry. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And now, for everyone's favorite part, boiled linseed oil. Oh my gosh, look at that. That chatoyance and that grain. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Whoa. Let this sit here and soak in a little bit. And while that's soaking, we'll make our leather strap and finish it off. Up the spike, like it. Let's see if it'll go. Yeah. Nice. All right. Oh, I love that. That strap looks great. I know I talked about earlier in the video doing some beadwork on a leather strap, and I still think I want to do that, but. Um, just wasn't exactly sure what pattern I want to do. I don't know if I want to replicate the same pattern I did here or something else, but we might just save that for a second video. Here we go, guys. It's time to test it out. We have spaghetti squash, butternut squash, pineapple, watermelon, and some waters. Let's see how it chops. That was 
awesome. <laughs> it did like bring. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> so brutal, you know? Because it feels like it's like things popping. Oh. Well, this thing turned out awesome. I absolutely love it. And it outperformed the way that I thought it would. This thing is crazy. It just completely demolished the fruits and vegetables and cut straight through water bottles way better than I thought it would. It is just brutal and a crazy weapon. And it turned out beautiful and I absolutely love it. I love all the brass against the wood, the decoration. The, I think the leather works really nice and the forged spike is a really good contrast. But really, I think the thing that makes it the most beautiful is this ridiculous wood grain. It's absolutely gorgeous. Couldn't be happy with the way it turned out. Now, we need you guys to vote for our chopper. This is a chopper challenge and we're competing against awesome other YouTube makers, 19 other makers. And you can find all their videos in the description down below. But you can also find the link to the voting poll and that's where you're going to go and you're going to vote for your favorite video. Now, last time around when we did the dagger challenge, we got, I think, 10th out of 20. So right in the middle, we want to try to do better than that this year. So head over, vote for us, let us know what you think, let us know what all the other videos that you think and vote for your favorite one. Get us into that top five, maybe all the way to the top. We absolutely love it. This is super fun. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure you don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.